Hi everyone, this is Sail from QuickNote and today we will talk about wallets and their types. So without any ado, let's jump into it. On a blockchain, your account address is your identity. So using a wallet which can be a software application or a hardware device, you can host your account in that wallet, send or receive transactions using the wallet or hold your digital currencies into that wallet. Wallets can be divided into two types, custodial and non-custodial wallets. Let's see an example and then we can deep dive into both type of wallets. Imagine a public parking building where you go, rent the parking space and park your car. You can park your car there, but you do not own it. Someone else owns it and has full control over it. Now imagine a parking space which is there with your house. It can be a parking space which you have built on your land or it can be something which is attached with your house like a garage. So you can park your car there and you have full control over it. You own it. Relating this example with wallets, custodial wallets are like public parking buildings. You can hold your funds in them, but you do not own the wallet or you do not own the private key of that wallet. Someone else, which is a third party or a custodian, owns the private key, which is very crucial and it should be kept private. But in a non-custodial wallet, you yourself are the owner of the private key and you yourself holds the private key, usually on a local computer. Now let's understand some key differences between both the wallet type. In terms of control, for custodial wallets, a third party controls and manages the private key. For non-custodial wallets, a user has full control over private keys. In terms of security and ownership, for a custodial wallet, the ownership of the private key may be shared with the third party or can be in full control of the third party. So there is a reliance on this third party for the wallet security and funds protection. But for non-custodial wallets, the user is the sole owner of the private key. Therefore, they are the ones who are responsible for the security of the wallet, which is securing the private key and for security of the funds as well. In terms of privacy, for a custodial wallet, there's limited privacy as the custodian of the private keys may collect some user information. For a non-custodial wallet, there is an enhanced privacy as there is no third party involvement. Now let's talk about some potential risks. For a custodial wallet, a custodian who holds your private key can get hacked and you may lose your private keys. A custodian might even put some restrictions on some users. So the wallet can become unusable and if any of this situation happens, there can be loss of funds or restriction to access your funds. For non-custodial wallets, the potential risks can be user errors, device losses or hardware failures. Imagine you have stored your private key on a device and that device fails or becomes dead. You might lose your private key and eventually your funds. So it's always recommended to store your private key offline on a hardware device or maybe you can write it on a piece of paper and store it very safely. In terms of convenience, a custodial wallet is a lot more convenient because it has friendly user interfaces and additional services. For a non-custodial wallet, a user may require some technical expertise to set up the wallet and use the wallet. But this has been changing with non-custodial wallet applications like Phantom, Metamask, Exodus, etc. Custodial wallets are ideal for crypto beginners or users who prioritize convenience. Non-custodial wallets are ideal for users who value security, control and privacy. Now that we know a lot about different types of wallets and we also saw that non-custodial wallets are better in terms of security, control and privacy. So let's see what are some of the best non-custodial wallets out there. The first one is Phantom Wallet which was first designed for Solana but now also supports Ethereum and Polygon. It also integrates very well with hardware wallets like Ledger. It has a very user-friendly and intuitive interface. It also supports Solana staking. The next wallet is Metamask. Metamask supports multiple EVM-based chains and it has been around the longest compared to other wallets on the list. That's why it also has an established user base. The next one is Exodus Wallet. It supports more than 50 chains, which are a lot of chains for a wallet. 
It also has a inbuilt portfolio tracker where you can track your different portfolios across different different chains. Plus, it gives users to swap multiple tokens across chains. So this was it from our video on custodial versus non-custodial wallets. If you found it helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Quicknote YouTube channel for more such videos in future. Thank you.